Judge England. The judges are Mr. Justo Vasquez of Madrid in Spain, Mr. Gut Jutras of Montreal, Canada, and Manuel Rodriguez of Barranca, Colombia. The referee for this contest in charge is Mr. John Coyle from England, officiating in his 19th World Championship contest. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing in the, the red corner, wearing the black trunks with the silver trim from La Flor Suridad Boulevard, Venezuela, boxing out of Ireland. His record reads 27 contests, 27 wins, 23 by KO. Would you please welcome the challenger, Cristiano Espana. In the blue corner, wearing the black trunks, his record wins 29 wins, two losses, and one draw. 15 KOs. The welterweight, WBA welterweight champion of the world from Philadelphia, Meldrick Taylor. At the weigh-in today, Espana scaled 147 pounds, that's 10 stone, 7 pounds. Meldrick, 146 and a half pounds, 10 stone, 6 and a half pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, the WBA Welterweight Championship of the World. Gentlemen. Now what I expect of you, all you might you guys not be part of the glove by my structures at all times. Shake hands, back to your calls, come out probably ready. Watching Espana jump up and down in this corner, waiting for all this to come about, it occurred to me he could do that from now to Christmas, Jim, because he used to be a marathon runner of all things, and he still routinely goes for 15 and 20 mile runs on his off weekends. And in addition to the unusual training regimen, Larry, he has one of the most unusual bodies we've seen in recent history in the welterweight division. Exceptionally long arms, George. And Taylor, on the other hand, is a relatively short-armed, compact, compactly built fighter. And I think it's never been so important as to about jump up and down as in this building is real cold and that just doesn't help Mildred Taylor because he's a fast starter he need to be a fast starter the other guy has been spending time in Ireland so his body should warm up a lot easier what we're seeing right off the bell here is Taylor trying to revert to his old boxing ways they've been trying to get him to do that for a couple of years but it but it took Norris, Terry Norris, to convince him that that's the way he really has to fight against these bigger men. Well, he talks the talk now. We'll see if he can walk the walk in the ring. Will he be the will-o'-the-wisp boxer who came on to earn world championships at 135 and 140 and 147 pounds? Or will he, in fact, be the slugger that he tried to be when he stood in front of Terry Norris six months ago. I think Mildred Taylor will box about as long as a polar bear would wear snowshoes. <laughs> going back to his Philadelphia origin, anytime he gets hit, he's going to barrel down and try to hit you back. One of the things you must love about Meldrick Taylor is the heart of a warrior. He loves to mix it up. So far, Crisanto Espana's long jab in the early going has begun to pose a problem for Taylor. And now Espana tries to bring the right hand behind the jab. If you ask me, Mildred Taylor shouldn't be moving so much. I mean, why? He's not fighting some guy who's going to chase him. He's not a true aggressor, just a long jab. Well, when Taylor was at his most effective for the first nine or ten rounds of the Chavez fight, he was moving in and out, but basically staying close to Chavez, beginning and ending tight exchanges around the body. Boy, what a good right hand to the body by Taylor that time. He still has the fast hands, George. And when you're fighting a guy of this nature, 
as a sponsor, you've got to land a lot of body shots because this guy's going to get stronger as the fight go on. The more body punches you land, the less capable he'll be able to land, hit you with a hard shot as the fight gets longer and longer. 14 seconds, now 10 seconds remaining in round number one. Meldrick Taylor defending his 147 pound championship against an undefeated fighter we've never seen before. One of the things I see here is something I saw on the tapes of España and that I liked a lot, which is that when his opponent punches, he punches. He doesn't wait for his opponent to stop. I know he's going to listen to me, George. I know you know what you're doing. Are you going to listen to me? Mel, you're going to listen to me. Are you going to listen to me? Now listen. Look, man. Don't run from him. Step away from him, but don't run from him. Well, be sure to join us Sunday morning, November 1 at 10.30 a.m. Eastern and Pacific for HBO's Countdown to Holyfield Bow. We'll take an in-depth look at both fighters and their respective camps as they prepare for their November 13 heavyweight championship fight. If you missed tomorrow's broadcast of the Countdown to Holyfield Bow, you can watch it Wednesday, November 4 at 7.30 p.m. Eastern and Pacific time. Countdown to Holyfield Bow. Easy job. Easy job. Okay. Then, when you get the opportunity, body. Body shot. Then, body shot. Okay. Go to head, head up to the body. George, Georgie Benton was pleading with Taylor between rounds not to run from España, to box him, move, but not run. Confirming what you said earlier, George. Yeah, you got to move in and out. Now, Taylor bumped heads that time. That's just not going to help him when you just had a knockout a few months ago. Now Duva yelling from the corner, Lou Duva that is, yelling to Taylor, that's the range, that's the range. Meldrick took a low blow, referee John Coyle did nothing about it. We'll watch that story to see if it develops. Once you have a fighter to be knocked out, as recent as Taylor lost, you just can't fuss at him in the corner anymore. You gotta let this guy, let it all just materialize. Let him get his confidence back as the fight go on. You argue in the corner, it's gonna pay off in the fight if you're just catching right hands too early. Right hand landed over the top for Hispania. So far, the length of Hispania's arms has proven a problem for Taylor. He'll have to solve the riddle of how to get inside and land his punches to the body. That head butt a little earlier did cause some bleeding on his punch. Bleeding on Hispania? Well, let's look for that, George. It'll be on the left side, up high. Saw Meldrick trying to double up with the left hook. When he's right, the left hook to the body is maybe his best punch. Good short right hand inside by Taylor. Espanya came back with a right hand of his own. Meldrick missed with the left hook as Espanya ducked away. Well, you're right about the abrasion on Espana's forehead. I can see it now, George, at close range. But Espana lands a right hand over the top. Meldrick comes back, misses with a left and a right. Now, Meldrick is going to be awful surprised at the extent of which his power is going to be a bit more effective this time because he's in with somebody 147 pounds like himself. So he can mix it up a little more. He needn't be too cautious. But this in is my a, mind. This is a strong 147 pound guy. He has his deep chest, long, thin limbs, a very unusual body, completely fearless and right now in control of the fight. And Taylor, though he scored knockouts at 140 pounds, hasn't knocked anybody out at 147, except for a fighter named Ernie Chavez, who was a 140 pounder coming up. Taylor landed a good, solid right hand in close. That's correct. Now, once Taylor finds his bit of comfort and realize, hey, this fight may go for a few rounds, don't try to do it in the first few rounds, wait around, frustrate this guy with movement. And blood is coming out of Meldrick Taylor's mouth. Hmm. Okay, come on. I may want to go reach him. For the head. Okay. Yeah, hit to the head. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's nothing. Nothing, it's nothing there. Nothing. It's not the way. Okay, come on. Come on, Gisando. That's the good work you have to do. You make the guy brave. 
Now just keep doing what you're doing. Keep the hands up good and high and be alert. Keep the jab going. Stick it at his chest, sticking at his belly, but double up, double up with your jab so he can't get the right hand to go. You understand? So he's fighting your jab with his right hand, so he can't he can't punch and block at the same time, can he? All right, well, keep the jab going. Don't punch from too far away. You're reaching at him too much. Okay, all right. Now, when you're down there, let's start going to that body. You heard him with a couple body shots there, right? Get down there, stay down there, go to that body, and just throw it. Throw it. All right. Come on. Come on. Good. Good boss. Nice job. Round three begins between Taylor and Espana. At some point, you're going to pick up there may be a lack, a lack of trust between Mildred Taylor and his corner because he felt they gave him some bad instructions against his last fight, in his last fight. And so they're trying to reestablish this communication again. A lot of arguing and a lot of trust. Taylor landed a right hand inside. Espana countered with a left hook that caught Taylor flush on the cheek. Now Meldrick goes back to the body. And the Meldrick Taylor, who was moving side to side and circling in round one, is now standing in front of Espana, much the way he stood in front of Terry Norris. And I think he can do it with a bit more confidence this time. This guy has not the power of a Terry Norris. Espana's jab landing. Meldrick has sometimes been short with the jab. Espana reaching over the top with the right hand. Landed a low blow and got away with it again. And now Taylor turns to referee John Coyle and says, ask him to keep him up, please. Taylor's corner is telling him to get with that jab, which is a mistake. He did not jab yet. This guy's got arms as long as this ring. Why should he exchange jabs with him? Espana landed a left when Meldrick came in close. Mildred waiting around for a good active jab. He's going to get hit with a lot of right hands. There's a left hand that Espana landed. Again, flush. Most of the solid blows in the fight so far landed by the challenger. Espana seems to be making Taylor pay a price every time he tries to get in close. Now Taylor willing to wait back and try to block Espana's punches with his gloves. But it's hard to mount an offense that way. Espana's looping left hand bothered Meldrick a little bit. Once you've been knocked out in your career, let me tell you, you go back into the ring and the gloves hit you, even if they're not hard, sounds like drums beating, boom! Because the fear that you might be knocked out again is in your head at all times. A moment ago, Espana came to Taylor and Meldrick landed a combination to the body, which was his best combination so far in the fight. He's going to have to solve the riddle of how to get close to Espana, George, and maybe the best way is to let the man come to him. No doubt about it, because he's, he's shot. He's a little shy now. And a lot of punches are going to hurt him tonight that really, in instance, is not hurting him. Right hand solid by Espana. Meldrick is wobbled. Referee John Coyle says fight on. Meldrick avoided a knockdown by catching his glove on the canvas, but he's in trouble. And not in as much trouble as against Norris, but Espana is looking to hurt him some more And I believe Taylor thought it was a knockdown. He looked at the at the referee. Thing. That's the first punch that really hurt. All right, let's see Espana how he works. He's very clever. He's had his a good school schooling in Venezuela. And Harold Letterman, is that really a knockdown? Larry, that's a knockdown. If any part of your body, except the soles of your feet, touch the canvas, it's a knockdown. The referee missed it. It was absolutely a knockdown. Should be a 10-8 round. Round four begins. Meldrick Taylor appeared to have been knocked down, at least technically, toward the end of round three. He touched his glove against the canvas to maintain support after a left and a right by Espana. Now Meldrick tries to reestablish confidence in round four, and so far it has been like walking on eggs for Meldrick Taylor. Espana increasingly confident and throwing the left hook with gusto, George. No doubt about it. Taylor's just had, like I said, the, the recent uh, defeat. He's cautious, overcautious, but now he should not take any fight to this guy. Don't don't give him any courage. Boxing. Stay away. Box. 
How do you I'll stay away from exactly a guy that. with such long arms, George? Because the guy never throws a punch unless he gets his feet flat, pl uh, fat, platted in. Doesn't throw anything on the tip of his ball of his feet. He's, he's waiting. Meldrick steps in and goes to the body. Landed the left, the right was blocked. Trying to fight his way in with the jab. Now Espana swinging from side to side with rights and lefts, and Taylor seems unable to block them. Espana sticks the jab. Taylor finally blocks a left, but takes a chopping right. And that punch looked like it shook Taylor also. And it's also back to Philadelphia now. <laughs> Left and a right for Espana. He continues to dictate the tempo inside. Taylor is saying he can't lose two in a row, so he's going to try everything he's can, he can that'll win this boxing match. Career on the line here, George, for a young man who was a 1984 Olympic gold medalist, one of the youngest gold medalists ever, had a brilliant early professional career, surprised everybody with a draw against Howard Davis, surprised everybody with an upset win over Buddy McGirt, fought the most brilliant fight against Julio Cesar Chavez that any opponent has ever produced, and it's been tough moments galore since then for Meldrick Taylor. Sure, he came on and won a welterweight championship in a great fight against Aaron Davis, but since that time, moments like this have continued to proliferate. And after the knockout loss to Terry Norris, at least one national magazine called Meldrick Taylor a shot fighter. Is he? He has to prove tonight that he isn't. I think already he's proven he's not a shot fighter. Got up off the canvas and took the fight right back to this guy. And of course, the big thing right here is that the rematch with Chavez is, appears to be in jeopardy, serious jeopardy. I think he's in the match of his life right now. He's most effective when he stays close. You hit this guy, get close to him, stop backing away. Another long right hand by Espana and another to finish the round. Round five begins. In the first four rounds, Meldrick Taylor, by our punch count numbers, has landed only 24% of 251 attempted punches. Espana has thrown more punches and landed at about a 10% higher rate. And in the closing seconds of round four, Espana rocked Taylor twice more with right hands. So you've had the one near knockdown and various other lefts and rights which appear to have wobbled Meldrick Taylor. He's having a tough time defending his WBA welterweight championship. Taylor, when, it, when he finishes combination, he should get closer to this guy. Normally, he's finishing too far away and he gets hit with this right overhand right. Like Get that. closer, get closer, his corner should tell him. How do you get closer without paying is the price he's paying? The guy is not interested in hitting Taylor when he's close at all. Only when he's far away. I think you got a good point, George. He does not appear to be an inside grappler. But if Taylor stays out here and lets the guy use his long arms for leverage and extension, he's in trouble. He's, he's definitely a long arm puncher, and he likes that distance. Well, there he landed a left hook in close. So that belies my notion for a moment. But Meldrick is still trying to find a solution as to how to get in close and control the action. Another left hand landed for Espana. The way to get in close is you, you lay in a couple of punches, then stay close. Taylor going to the body. He should keep going to the body to try to slow this guy down. That was, the best, punches. that was the best 10 seconds of the fight for Taylor, in close. Taylor having to take some punishment to give it, but he's beginning to step up the tempo of his own offense. Ducking punches inside, staying close. Now let's see if he'll remember to go to the body. Takes two left hands right in the mouth. They never should have told Taylor to box this guy with such long arms. Should have been fighting like this from the beginning. Well, 
sometimes even a great corner can be the wrong corner for a particular fighter. And this marks the second fight in a row, George, in which you believe that the on paper tremendous corner of Lou Duba and George Benton are letting Meldrick Taylor down. Right, they're trying to make him regress to the days when he was a boxer. Hey, he's a big, strong guy from Philadelphia. Let him fight. I don't know, George. He's never had punching power at 147 pounds. Maybe he can gain it with more confidence. Taylor landed a right hand inside. Espana lands a right. Oh, here. Oh, deep breath. Come on, deep. Come on, deep. Again. Come on. How do you feel, Cham? You feel good? Yeah. Wonderful. Then, yeah. come on. Come on. Fight don't, don't fight with him inside. Okay? This WBA World him. Welterweight Championship fight appears on the air as the second half of our HBO doubleheader tonight in case you tuned in late and missed the WBC heavyweight title eliminator between Ray Zerotic and Lennox Lewis, which we showed earlier this evening. We will be rebroadcasting that important contest later tonight at 1 o'clock in the morning Eastern and Pacific time. No trick, that's the treat. Be with us at 1 a.m. Eastern and Pacific to see Lewis and Ruddock. Now you're boxing, buddy. that's what to do. Come on, baby, now you're coming on. Now you're coming on. Come on. Round six of a scheduled 12 for the WBA welterweight title. Meldrick Taylor, still the title holder, lands a big right hand to start round six. Esponzo is a good boxer, but how, what are you going to run into tough Philadelphians when you're li living in Ireland? This guy should fight him. At all times, Taylor should be fighting this guy. And Espana has a great left jab, but he's not a power puncher up close. Well, of course, George, there are some who would say that the mean streets of Belfast will outstrip Philadelphia for meanness. That is true. <laughs> little scotch. He fights in the gym in Northern Ireland every day. That's the same gym that produced, among others, the famous featherweight titleist Barry McGuigan. And finally, referee John Coyle has to take action about a low blow as Meldrick Taylor goes to his knees. Should not have to be wearing trunks like that. I don't even see the evidence of a good cup up close to him. The trunks he's wearing is not very protective. I mean, he had to evidently build a uh, cup to protect, to hide. Fashion outrunning function with those trunks. And the referee is taking a point away from Espana, which seems odd to me since he never even warned it before. Harold, what's the rule here on Taylor's recovery? Well, Jim, it was an accidental clear-cut low blow. Meldrick has up to five minutes to recuperate, at which time, it, you know, if he doesn't continue, he loses. All right, he's coming out of the corner, so no Looks problem Looks to me like there. he should have taken Re more time. Right. Referee John Coyle did deduct the point from Crisanto Espana for the low blow. Good left hook by Mildred Taylor. To the body. Outstanding. Right hand also. Taylor fighting with new aggressiveness. Maybe the low blow has given him the incentive he needs to simply seize command of the bout. Giving and taking. Taylor goes to the low blow and gets away with one of his own. to the body, lands a left hook to the side of the head. For the first 30 seconds after the low blow stoppage, Meldrick Taylor has his best 30 seconds of the fight. But now Espana lands one of those lengthy right hands and Meldrick slows down again. He takes a breather and stands outside. He should take a breather inside. Won't get hit with so many overhand rights. Taylor should stay a little closer. Well, you know, one thing Meldrick has never tried to do and never learned to do in his career is to fight along the ropes. And it looks to me, George, as if he knew how to do that, he might be able to confuse Espana a little more than he has. Any little thing he can throw in at this time would only help. But he's got to stay a little closer to Espana. They are fighting in a 20-foot, 8-inch ring. It is cavernous. There's a long right hand by Espana. Meldrick Taylor. Of course, that's the danger in becoming aggressive, that he was going to walk into a punch like that, which he did. He's only getting hit on the outside. If he stayed close, nothing is going to happen. 
Vanya uses the left, sets up the right. Meldrick is either playing possum or in terrible trouble. Not playing possum. Now he finally grabs and holds. And holds. But wobbles backward. And Meldrick Taylor survives the sixth round. And wobbles to his corner. Hey, no. No. Listen, this is when you need a father figure. You don't need a corner now. Lou Duva should just jump in and say, I'm with you. I'm with you. Outside again. All right, all right. All right. You're listening to me, Mother. Now, look, Mother. The guy can't fight a nigga on the inside, and that's where you belong. You know, you got to stay close to the guy. Mother, the guy can't fight a nigga inside. I'm telling you, but he's hitting you with the long punches on the outside. Inside's where you should be. Come on, baby. You understand? Come on, Come on baby. Now, Mel, get yourself together and get close to this guy and stay close. Pull out. Grab that. Seventh round. Come now, Mel, get yourself right, together. Mel. Stay close. Now, on, stay on the inside now. Move. Okay, let's take a look and see how Espana did this. That little chopping oh, right seemed to send Taylor up, off balance, and Espana went on the attack. Taylor cannot get to Espana without exposing himself to those punches because Espana steps back. What we're seeing here is the limitations of Taylor against bigger men. He is a short fighter who is not powerful, so that even when he gets inside, he doesn't hurt his opponent unless he can land fusillades of punches. And this guy is very clever. He's waiting for him to come to him, but step back, and he's looking for an opening, and he's able to deliver. Larry, he doesn't need to hurt him. He needs to just stay close and win points. It's not about hurting the guy, it's about staying away from his power, which is outside. Now his corner told him to stay close, it's too late. He should have told him that initially. He's just finding out the good news. Vesanto Espana lands another right hand flush on Meldrick Taylor's face. Taylor with specific instructions from George Benton to get inside, seemingly at a loss as to how to do it. Espana has him in trouble again. Meldrick Taylor survives this round, it still seems, to me at least, like only a matter of time. I'll tell you guys, management decisions in boxing are idiosyncratic. It's certainly an inexact science, but over the long haul, I'm of the opinion that Meldrick Taylor was a 140-pound fighter who never should have gone to 147 pounds, championship or no championship. Well, but that was his decision because he didn't, couldn't make the weight anymore. And this is not a management decision that the problem is here. He had to fight a mandatory challenge, and that's when his trouble began. Because Espana is too strong for him, and he's too clever. Taylor looking Mildred. weary, still trying. You get Mildred Taylor before his last fight, he could have beaten this guy in easily. But now his confidence has been shot. Corner don't know, tell him to box, then tell him to stay close. Everybody's confused. How big an imprint did Terry Norris's right hand make on Meldrick Taylor's career? You are seeing the fallout tonight, along with the surprisingly effective performance of a heretofore unknown contender named Crisanto Espana. Now, Taylor is trying to protect himself by, from the right hand by bringing his right hand from the near his waist back up to his face, and he's not timing it. The best thing to do is lay that right hand right up there beside your left, left side of your face and keep it there. George, with all due respect, this isn't a matter of strategy. I don't think that anything Meldrick Taylor could do would undo what this guy is doing to him because he's just got the, the size and the answers for whatever Taylor as a small, short welterweight can do with him. You got a feel for Taylor. He's at the end of all these long arm punches and it's a riddle he just hasn't solved. Larry, round six was really very, very interesting. Now, it was a 10-8 round, clearly a 10-8 round for Crisanto Espana, but he loses one point because the referee takes away a point and a low blow becomes 9-8. to eight. But Espana, uh, five rounds to two so far. This is an early stage of the round as Espana goes on the attack. I have him ahead six rounds to one, and this is the end of the round. Meldrick Taylor took a terrible beating in that round. 
as they go to round eight, you have the beginnings numerically of a mismatch. By punch count numbers in round number seven, Meldrick Taylor landed only 11 of 56 attempted punches. Crisanto Espana, 41 of 88. Now, Espana has better start trying to protect his lead now. He gets into many more mix-up like that. Some left hook could come from somewhere out of the sky and drop him. But as the fight goes on, if it follows this pattern, George, you have to begin to consider what kind of welterweight champion is Crisanto Espana going to make? And will he insist on defending the title in Belfast, Northern Ireland, which could make for some fascinating moments in the division? And with a left jab like that, he can win internationally. Once you got a good jab like that, you can fight anybody, and even in their hometown. I think his body is a huge advantage, too. He has these long arms. He's not skinny. He's got a deep chest. Sucks up a lot of oxygen, which means he recovers quick. I think he might might start an exodus from Venezuela to Belfast. <laughs> <laughs> Espana kind of just lay that right hand out there. He doesn't give any motion or power to it. Lays it out there and it just connects. And we should mention here that he had a, a younger brother who once was a lightweight champion. Ernesto Espana, the man who talked Barney Eastwood, promoter and manager, into taking this Espana on. If the fight goes another round like it is now, it would be in the interest of Duva and his camp to maybe even consider stopping the fight. Two knockouts, that much punishment. I agree with you, George. And I think that perhaps Meldrick Taylor does too right now. I think he's got to stop the fight. No, he's not going to stop the fight. That's a very brave referee. And it's a still brave Meldrick Taylor, and he always has been. A warrior's heart, which is going to betray him here. John Coyle, within moments of stopping the fight, Lou Duva's on the top step, and they both make the decision at the same moment. Duva was stepping into the ring as Coyle spread his arms to stop the bout. If Meldrick Taylor was a shot fighter coming into this fight, he's a dead fighter now. You win some and you lose some. You try to win more than you lose. 28-year-old <laughs> Crisanto Espana out of Venezuela, now living and fighting out of Belfast, Northern Ireland has won them all in his career, 28 in a row. And now, he's the WBA welterweight champion of the world. I think what could have happened and should have happened, Milton Taylor should have taken off at least a year after the last beating he suffered. Let's take a look at the first knockdown, gentlemen. Well, this is a knockdown that started way back in the first round when Espana already showed signs of being a little bit too much for Taylor, and he just gradually built on that. This is the same sequence of punches. Cristiano Espana has turned out to be a world-class champion. And now let's look at the end of the fight about 15 or 20 seconds after it should have been stopped. But the referee did give Taylor the champion's privilege of going on. Which was nice. Well, when you remember what Meldrick Taylor was not too long ago, this is hard to watch. And harder yet to watch for Julio Cesar Chavez. Who has just watched a couple million go down the drain. At least. For the final particulars on this, let's go up to ring announcer Mike Goodall. Ladies and gentlemen, after 2 minutes 11 seconds of the 8th round, the referee has stopped the contest. Meldrick Taylor being in no position to defend himself. The winner and new WBA welterweight champion of the world, Cristiano Espana. <laughs> to present the belt, the supervisor in charge, Nipper Reed. Thank <laughs> you.
So Crisanto Espana tries on a brand new belt. And I think he's going to wear it with pride. I mean, this guy's got a great left jab, and who would have thought a guy boxing and training in Ireland would have an uppercut like that? I think he's going to be a very tough customer in the welterweight division. The other champions, Maurice Blocker, is the champion, or the champion under the International Boxing Federation's aegis. Good fighters, both fighters. I think it's an excellent fight. It was a great match for television. And uh, believe me, they were evenly matched. The best man won tonight. And the WBC World Welterweight Champion is James Buddy McGirt, who is headed for a date next year with Pernell Whitaker, Meldrick Taylor's longtime stablemate and very close friend. Normally at this point, you would see our Larry Merchant interviewing, in this case, winner and loser in the ring. But in Great Britain, Fighters are not interviewed in the ring following a fight because first, they must both be examined by ring doctors and second, the British Boxing Board of Control does not like the in-the-ring confusion which follows from having so many people in the ring immediately following the fight. So consequently, we wait now with Larry at ringside for the fighters to be brought to us. Final punch stat numbers, and there you have the statistical mismatch. Rizanto Espana landing nearly 40% of 586 punches. Meldrick Taylor's connect percentage went down from round to round as the fight went on. And now we go to Larry Merchant with the brand new WBA welterweight champ. Cristiano Espana, are you surprised how easy this was for you? No, I'm not surprised because I am ready for that fight. I know Major. Yeah, I think uh, I've been Major Taylor. Meldrick Taylor has such a reputation as a good fighter. Did that not bother you at all? Yes, uh, uh, very much. But I am training very well. I very confident I not come out of Mandy Taylor. Where did you realize that you were dominating him and that you were going to win this fight? Because I believe myself. Where in the ring during this fight? When did you sense that the fight was yours? And I started in the beginning of the fight. I know the fight is mine. Why? Because I, I don't feel Magic is strong enough for me. He's not a strong welterweight. No, not a strong welterweight. Very fast welterweight, but not strong. And your reach advantage, he could not get to you. Yeah, well, my reach hurt a lot of me with my jab. But I was ready for that fight. Did you think you had a knockdown earlier in the fight when he went down with his both hands to the canvas? Yes, yes. Were you surprised that they didn't call it a knockdown? Did you protest at all? No, 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 sir. Did you think that eventually you were going to get him at that point? Yes, uh, see, uh, the fight is 12 rounds. I, I, and any round has my chance. Do you think that he is through as a fighter now? Yes, I see. He can't fight anymore, not as a welterweight? No, no, in welterweight. I can't fight in, in welterweight. No, no way. Well, you're the second member of your family to hold the world championship. Yes. That must be a very good feeling for you. Yes, very good for me, for my family, my mom, the second son world champion. Uh, the, and very, very town, very, very, very small town in Sudan Bolivar. I am a farmer. And the other 13 children, the other 13 brothers and sisters of yours must be watching. Yes, maybe watch, maybe not. <laughs> Well, you're the champion of that big family now, as well as the champion of the WBA welterweight division. Thank you very much for a wonderful fight. Congratulations. And now back to Jim. All right. Thanks very much, Larry. And George, if it shows us one thing, it shows us how big the world of boxing is. You study and study. You think you know everybody. And all of a sudden, somebody comes out of the woodwork and you say, wow, look at this guy. A lot of people thought coming in, based on what they'd seen on tape, that Crisanto Espana was dangerous, now we know how dangerous he was. Talk about the world market, my goodness, everybody being competitive. We've seen it here tonight for a bad day for Mildred Taylor, but he shouldn't feel bad. He's had a good career, lots of wins, lots of, vi lots of victories, and lots of money. And of course, uh, amid what will be seen as his worst